election, on that occasion, that he made the profound statement, I belong to everyone, I belong to no one. However, he and, moreover, he and his service chiefs have managed to send the terrifying message that Nigerian lives are cheap and can be surrendered as collateral damage. That right there is an excerpt from the protest that happened a few days ago at Abuja. And of course, it was put together by the Enough is Enough Nigeria Civil Rights Group. Now, today we have with us the Executive Director of Enough is Enough Nigeria, Yemi Adamoleko. I should give us an insight into what exactly went down in Abuja. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, really quickly, it was just a response to, to the killings in Plateau particularly. And at that point, I mean, protests in Nigeria usually have like a tipping point that people got to. Um, so it wasn't just EIE, we called it enough is enough, but it was EIE and a bunch of other organizations, including Charlie Boys, Amumu Dondu, and a few others. And the idea was just to give voice to what was happening in the country. So Wednesday, we were in Abuja, and um, police, as usual, came out. But what was different about this time was that because the day before, seven of their colleagues had been killed, their resolve was a bit lower because we, we spoke to that issue as well, so that it's not just random Nigerians that you might not care about, but also people that you know that are your colleagues. Um, and again, we said we'll be back next week, Wednesday, or this Wednesday, in two days. Um, we had heard that Khan was planning a protest, so the idea was on the streets of Abuja on the same day, let's have as many Nigerians on the streets talking about this issue. Unfortunately, Khan has um, cancelled their rally, but ours will go on, on, on Wednesday. Any reasons why? Well, the, the assumption is that last week, um, the northern block of Khan had a meeting with President Buhari, and he basically um, reassured them that he was working on it, I guess and they decided not to go ahead. And have the government responded to last week's campaign in any way so far? Not directly, but I think in um, President Buhari's response to Khan's visit, because the rally was on Wednesday, Khan visited on Thursday, um, there were references to our comments about the Constitution, for example, that it's their responsibility. Um, someone who had spoken at the rally spoke about <coughs> President, <coughs> excuse me, President Buhari being Fulani, and him being able to, at least the part of it that has to do with Fulani headsmen, because we did talk about the fact that it's not just Fulani headsmen, but the economic issues, the political opportunist also leveraging on it. But as a Fulani person, that he can speak to the issues, and he has cattle, but his are on a ranch. And so he spoke to that effect and said that, how can anyone think he doesn't care uh, just because he's Fulani? Um, so indirect responses, we would say, from his statement to Khan, had excerpts of some of the issues we had raised. Um, were you able to speak with any with President Muhammad Buhari directly or any of his representatives on the day of the protest? The police were his representative. And actually the head of DSS at the rally <laughs> said he was very disappointed in us that we would come. And we gave him a piece of our mind that you don't have the right nor the privilege of saying that you are disappointed. We're citizens and it's our right to express our discontent with the government any way we choose, as long yeah. as it's not illegal. Absolutely. And protest is not illegal, last time I checked. And um, what would you say is your desired outcome with regards well, to this protest in particular? We say five things. So number one is naming and counting the dead. Because um, every different, Amnesty has its numbers, Council on Foreign Relations has its numbers, but the federal government of Nigeria does not have a number. So 20 today, 35, 45, but they're just numbers. And after a while, people get numb to seeing pictures of dead bodies. And we're saying, look, you need to humanize these people and say, this is Zainab, she was 15, mm -hmm. she was on her way to school. That way people have a mental picture of the type of things we are doing to fellow citizens. That's number one. Same thing for those who have been displaced. So communities are being taken over and people are in different places. Where are they? What is being done to them? Number three, we used the um, protest by the police in Meduguri a few, about a week ago now, to say that if they are indicting the IG of police as not paying their salaries and allowances, then obviously the service chiefs are doing something wrong. So fire the service chiefs. And then justice for the dead. That for those who have been killed, that proper investigation is done and the perpetrators brought to book and then compensation for either communities, farms, right. whatever it is that has been destroyed in the process. Brilliant. All right, our final question in 10 seconds sure. each, please. Which way Nigeria? Citizens need to find their voice, honestly, because at the heart of it, we need to remember that everybody, which is what we call the office of the citizen, everyone who is in an elected position was put there to represent and to work for us. And when they do wrong, we owe it to ourselves and to them, really, to hold them accountable. All right, and for you? Uh, what I want to say is that uh, governance is too important to be left to politicians. Mm, you know, we, we, that, and that's the mistake. We always assume because they are old people, because they are experienced, they should know what to do. These people don't know what to do. And when we have opportunities to tell them what to do, we should always do it. All right. Yeah. We know that these conversations cannot stop talking. We need to feel these conversations. We need to keep talking about them. For people who want to join your campaigns and find out more information about what you're doing, how can they follow you both? 
Um, easy eie.ng is the website, and we're on social media as EIE Nigeria. So Twitter, Instagram. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm not leading a campaign, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always, you know, pull people towards EI because I like what they're doing. And so I would say that if you want to be part of this discussion, you know, um, follow EIE Nigeria and um, we would always, you know, we would always be networking. And then you can also follow him personally at Ni underscore well, yes, yes. Yes. And, and his blog as well. <laughs> yeah. Because you blog as and well. And it's a great example of a citizen taking action. Because yes. I didn't reach out to Ni, he just said, look, how can I use my skill to add to this conversation? And that's Amazing. what he did. Thank Strength you very numbers. much for yeah. joining us and for making this conversation really, really rich. Thank you so much. Now, Thank one you. of the Thank things you. that EIE Nigeria has demanded for is that we name and number the dead. We find that in Nigeria we've become this sensitized to the numbers of killings that are happening around the world. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.